Hey everyone, I'm going to be showing you a cooldown reduction and lifesteal build for Anubis in Smite, patch 10.5, Season of Hope. And this build was only tested in arenas so far. Okay, so the first item that we're going to buy is Vampiric Shroud. This gives you 4% magical lifesteal and 35 magical power and some MP5. It also gives you a passive, damaging any enemy with an ability restores 3 health and 6 mana. Uh, this is very good in the beginning to pair up with Anubis's lifesteal passive. And it can also be upgraded at level 20, which gives you 135 magical power, some more MP5, and over 10% magical lifesteal, which is very good for the price that it is at level 20. It's only about 1,500 coins. So you're going to buy this first. The second thing you're going to buy is Bancroft's Talon. This gives you 100 plus magical power, 200 mana, and 10% magical lifesteal. This is very good for the price that it is. It also gives you a passive. You gain additional magical power and lifesteal scaled from missing health. This caps at 100 power and 10% lifesteal at 40 health, 40% health, sorry. But this is a very good second item. You're going to want this lifesteal to pair up with Vampiric Shroud and your passive to uh, sustain more and secure more kills. And for the price, like I said, very good. <laughs> also, something I forgot to mention is after you buy Bancroft's Talon, you're going to want to upgrade it to Bancroft's Claw as soon as you possibly can. Because it gives you an extra passive. Every 15 seconds, gain a stack of hunger, max of 3 stacks. Abilities cast within 30 units of enemies' gods. Consume a stack, dealing bonus damage equal to 0.5% of their max HP for each 75 magical power you have. So this is going to scale appropriately to how much magical power you have throughout the game. And it does scale out to quite a lot, considering that this build has around 6 to 700. Each god damaged by hunger provides you with a shield of 0.5% of your max HP for each 75 magical power you have. So it does give you a little shield as well. Strengthen my plea. The third thing you're going to buy is Cronus's Pendant. This is where your cooldown reduction begins. It gives you 100 plus magical power, 20 MP5, and 20% cooldown reduction. And it gives you a very important passive that pairs well with one of the items that we're going to be talking about later. The passive is, every 10 seconds the pendant activates, subtracting 1 second from all your abilities currently on cooldown. Um, so every 10 seconds it's going to subtract 1 second, which is great for the price that this is. So you're going to buy this third. The fourth thing you're going to buy is Typhon's Fang. You're going to bring it back with more magical lifesteal and a little bit more magical power. Gives you 85 magical power, 200 mana, 10% magical lifesteal, and 16% magical penetration. Gives you some of that penetration for tanks, which is great, and for the price that it is. This is a very cheap build. Uh, the passive is, your healing obtained from magical lifesteal is increased by 15%. So on top of this that it gives you, it gives you 10% magical lifesteal. It increases your other lifesteal by 15% on top of Bancroft's Talon, and on top of Empiric Shroud, on top of your passive. This, this item goes hard. You need this. It also increases your magical power by twice the amount of magical lifesteal you have. So this alone is doubling, almost doubling your magical power and lifesteal. So that's the fourth thing you're going to buy. The fifth thing we're going to buy is Spear of Desolation. This is where things start to get tasty. Uh, it gives you 100 plus magical power, 15% magical penetration, and 10% cooldown reduction. So, like I said, pairing with Cronus's Pendant, every 10 seconds this is subtracting 1 second from your cooldown. The passive on this is, if you receive a kill or an assist on an enemy god, all of your non-ultimate cooldowns are reduced by 2 seconds, and your ultimate cooldown is reduced by 6 seconds. So every 10 seconds you're getting a 1 second subtraction with Cronus's Pendant, and Whenever you get a kill or assist, it reduces it by two seconds. So mid to late game, you're looking at about maybe a five to six second cooldown for all of your abilities, which is very good. With this, I bring death. And then the last thing we're going to buy is kind of a toss-up. I use Rod of Tehuti. Um, it gives you 140 plus magical power, 30 MP5, and 8% magical penetration. It also gives you a passive, basic attacks and abilities gain 20% additional magical power against targets below 60% health. This is great because most of the time when we're comboing somebody with a 2-3-1, they're already going to be at 60% health. So anything that happens after that that we do is going to be 20% stronger. 
Like I said, this, this is a toss-up. This is an arena build. So, if you want to change this, let's say you want more penetration against a tank, you're going to want to use Obsidian Shard because this gains more magical penetration than the Rana Tahuti. And if this doesn't work out, then maybe try using Spear of the Magus. Both of these work well in place of Rada Tahuti, but I just use Rada Tahuti for straight raw magical power. Okay, now I'm going to show you what it looks like against a god. Let's try Ymir. Keep in mind that these gods do not have any protection, so that the power is a little different. Two, three, one. Almost all of his health. Let's try it against a raw. Can you not freeze me? Let's try it against a raw, two, three, one. Amazing damage. Let's try it against a Guan Yu. Two, three, one. Just a Venton. Still amazing damage. But now I'm going to show you some gameplay with this build. Okay, so in this game I'm faced with a Mercury, a Kabrakan, a Discordia, a Thanatos, and a Morgan. Uh, I hate this comp. It has Discordia. She can stun me 24-7. Kabrakin is just annoying. Two assassins. Yeah, it's just all bad. So here, I purchase my items, have a little laugh, but then it's time to get down to business. So here, I miss my two, but I snag first blood, because I'm a cold certified killer. This Thanatos wanted the smoke, but he used his relic to get away. Here I'm just showing how great he is at setting up a kill. Mercury tries to run up on me and give me the one two, but I give him the two three one. Hold his teammate. This Mercury tried again for some reason, but you know I had to hit him with it. So here I'm running from this Morgan and this Thanatos. I would have not made it out of this fight alive without utilizing lifesteal in my build and my team saving me. This is where I feel that Anubis really shines when the team is in very tight clusters, very high area damage. Double kill. Rampage. Your Triple kill. Quadra kill. Unstoppable. <laughs> Here I'm just trying to get an angle on this Morgan. They just cluster up, massive amounts of damage, setting it up for the rest of my team. The Discordia gets me low, but I hit her with that fadeaway shot, you know? And then Thanatos comes out of the fucking sky and fucking And then Thanatos leaves after diving me and dying. So, we basically rolled them for the rest of the game. So I went 17 and won that game. It wasn't the best game. I had 24,000 player damage, uh, highest in the lobby, but nothing too crazy, you know. So this is game two. The comp wasn't too bad. They had a Bologna, Daji, Cerberus, Yu Huang, and a Ra. One warrior, one tank. Not too bad. So in this clip, I'm trying to engage the Bologna on the right, but I get ulted by the Ra. Even at the health that I'm at, I'm still able to sustain and secure the kill. And even though I died, I still stayed there and dealt damage. So in this clip, try to keep an eye on my cooldowns and my health. This is full build, full lifesteal proc, full cooldown reductions. I demolish the Daji. I secure the kill on Yao Huang, or however you fucking say his name. I ult the Ra. I try to kill him, but I get greedy and try chasing him. But that's not what I want to talk about. I turn around. I mummify the Cerberus, get lifesteal. Bologna comes in. I also get life steal from her and sustain long enough to stay in this fight and deal more damage with my team. And the last two that I throw out misses at this raw, but if it would have hit, it would have been a great stun tool for my team to use and clean up on afterwards. So in this clip it's just me and Bacchus, we get ulted by Daji, I relic, 
try to run away, but I turn around and notice that he's going in. So I go in, catch a kill, catch a ton of life steal, pop my ult, and get two more. So I turn an unfair fight with Daji ulting us, with only one other teammate next to me, into a triple kill just off of my life steal attributes alone. So we end up winning the game. I get the last kill. You know, we get the sick, nasty dubs key. So this is the end results. I went 27 and 5 with 11 assists. I had almost 70,000 player damage, highest in the lobby. But I've seen this build do way more in terms of kill death ratio like 30 bombs, 40 bombs. And this build is not to be underestimated with these numbers. So in terms of leveling abilities and how I do it, I tend to put an extra one or two levels into Mummify above my 3-in-1 just because the stun duration increases and the cooldown is the most expensive one out of all three of your abilities. So you want this one to be on the quickest cooldown that you can for the most uptime. So I got a few takeaways and afterthoughts to mention, and I'm not a pro player by any means, but not all games are like the last one that I showed you. In terms of that, I just played this arena game. I went positive, I went 13-7, and seven, but we still lost the game. My team did absolutely atrocious. I was picking off their squishies, the Scylla, the Neath, and the Serket. I was picking them off pretty easily. But this Hercules and this Vamana were just bullying me all game. Hercules was stunning me and Vamana just wouldn't stay off of me. So if you get queued up against two tanks, that is bad juju. So I think the way to play Anubis is to flank appropriately and safely. Get in there, mummify, use your combo, get out. And then rotate on your cycles. And you can't be too greedy with this because you'll find that you have no disengage. Anubis doesn't really have any abilities for movement. So pick your battles wisely. So if you made it this far through the video already, I thank you so much for watching my video. And if you did enjoy this build and it does give you value, please go ahead and like the video so it gets to more people and I know to create more content like this. If you guys have any recommendations on the items that I chose or feedback, go ahead and leave it down below as well and I will try to read those as soon as I can. If you have any mentions for any other gods that you want me to make a build for, I will do those as well. And if you really love me, then you'll sub and I will love you back forever and ever and ever. Thank you very much and have a blessed day.